a little bit about the history. Um, we started off with paper design manuals, um, uh, different manuals for different belt types, synchronous, V micro V, polychain, long length, uh, and our thermoplastic um, polyurethane belts. We then transitioned about 20, 25 years ago to um, software, uh, Design Flex Pro, our um, software used for designing pretty much with off the shelf uh, products. Design IQ, which needs a little bit more information. Um, and Design Flex Mobile, which are web based software. What is Design IQ? Well, it's a design software with the following characteristics. Uh, you can design multi pulley drives, so you can design with two or more pulleys. Um, I'm not sure what the limit is. I've never reached a limit, but you can certainly design with two, three, 10, 20 pulleys if you wish. It supports various methods of applying tension, such as a slotted tensioner or a uh, pivoting tensioner. Um, the designs are based on ratings developed from testing, and it uses algorithms to translate these into drive designs. It includes gates, standard synchronous and V-belt ranges, and industry standard pulleys, but you can design using any belt length and any pulley size. It doesn't have to be an existing size, although you should uh, remember if you use a belt length that doesn't exist, that tooling would have to be uh, sourced in order to actually go into production with that belt. You can design on double-sided belts, both synchronous and V-belts. Um, you can incorporate a multi-speed, multi-load duty cycle. The products are selected from drop-down menus, or you can type them in directly. So you will have a drop-down menu with the standard belt lengths, for example, and the standard pulley sizes, but you can also type in your own um, lengths and sizes. Other features, you can use a standard tensioner. Um, you can use a spring-loaded tensioner. And the layout can actually be uploaded to CAD. You can get a DXF file of the layout. It will be difficult in the time we have to go through any of these sub extra features, but we can, um, on request, go through them with you uh, at some point in the future. Things it doesn't include, we don't have the capability at this time of doing long length belts or our TPU belt ranges. So while they may be included in the future, they're not included with Design IQ at the moment. It's our standard range of um, rubber, V and synchronous belts, and our polychain ranges as well. Uh, Gates Design software can be downloaded from gates.com. Um, both Design IQ and the uh, other software, Design Flex Pro. Design Flex Mobile, which is the, again, it's the mobile, it's the web based version of the Design Flex Pro software, is also available to be downloaded from the website. Uh, we'll get straight into it. Time's um, quite short. So once you launch Design IQ, you will normally have this screen. You may recognize it. It's a very similar screen to what you see from uh, Design Flex uh, Pro also. So it allows you to either select the current user or add new users. Um, when you do so, you can tailor the settings to meet your needs, be it the um, units you want to use in the design, the uh, um, the belt range you want to select, etc. As is normal, you can see the required fields using the star to highlight them. Uh, if you select a new user, you'll see the um, a box similar for as per what's at the bottom right there, um, where you have to add in your background information, ID, email address, um, your name, etc. Points to note. Uh, as you go through this is that when you get to the bottom, 
there's a product market. Um, make sure you select a relevant product market. It's got North America and it has Europe. Um, the ranges of belts available in both areas are similar, but not the same. And they have slightly different trade names in some cases. So if you're using uh, belts from the European market, you should select Europe from that drop down box. North America, obviously North America. And I would expect pretty much everybody on this call to be using belts from Europe. You can put in a default energy cost. To be honest, there isn't any use for it in um, Design IQ. It doesn't have any of the energy saving functions of Design Flex Pro, but you can enter it if you wish, but it's not a required field. Once you've uh, registered your software, um, you will be able to go into this page here. This is the home page, and it has some simple functions like um, uh, change user because you can have multiple users um, on the same software. You can select users from a, from a list of uh, those registered. You can view your registration information. It allows you to select a language. There are seven languages available within Design IQ, and you can use it for the software and the printout. Um, you can manage plugins, but uh, I think plugins are more advanced than anybody who is out with Gates will have uh, access to. You can also have a look at uh, the help, which gives you various support options, and um, that will give you contact details for Gates's software support team, et cetera, so that you can contact them if you have any issues. You can also contact your uh, Gates application engineer if you have uh, any issues as well, and we will do our best to direct it to the right place. When you uh, go to the, um, the box there, you've got some choices. Um, a new drive, quite straightforward. You can start a new drive. You can open an exist one, existing one. It will list some recent files and exit. But we'll go on as if uh, we're designing a new drive. When you select new drive, what it does is it opens this box here. Um, you can see that the, it lists synchronous belts and V micro V belts. If you click on the little button, the plus and minus button at the edge there, what it does is it starts to show you the different belt types available to design. And if you click on each of the belt types, it starts to list the pitches of belts available for each belt type. Um, so you select belts from this list. These are the standard belts. Um, if you have a slightly non-standard construction it is not possible to do designs with Design IQ. As I say, the power ratings are based on testing, and the testing is quite exhaustive and is generally restricted to our standard belts. So it's standard types and pitches. You can only, unlike Design Flex Pro, where you can put in a range of belts and, um, and it will select a number of options. In Design IQ, you've got to know what you're wanting to do up front, pretty much. It will only design on one belt type and pitch at a time. So you have to select that up front by going to this menu here and putting a cross next to the pitch you want to use within the belt type. Uh, when we go to a live example, there are a number of items to consider. Um, in Design IQ, the design is based on absorbed power and torque. So as opposed to in Design Flex Pro, where you're generally putting in the input power, the motor power, um, Design IQ, you're looking to put in the absorbed power or torque. If you only know the, the motor power, then that's the power you will put in but you can only put it in on a um, driven pulley, not on the driver or motor uh, engine pulley. 
there are warnings highlighted, um, highlighted as it goes along with if there are issues such as if the pulleys are too small, if the speed's um, higher than the standard for um, off the shelf cast iron pulleys, there's a there's a warning highlighted then. Um, so there are some safeguards, but there are fewer safeguards in Design IQ there, than there are in Design Flex Pro. The expectation is you will have a bit more knowledge in Design IQ and uh, that you will be able to make some uh, more decisions uh, for yourself. I find it good practice that um, you start to build up the, uh, the drive by placing pulleys in the uh, layout screen. And I, uh, it defaults with the first one to the coordinate zero, zero, and I tend to keep that as the uh, coordinate for the motor or driver pulley. It's just generally, I think, good practice. Idlers are normally positioned in the slack side of the drive. That's standard belt design practice. Um, you would like to decide early on or you need to decide early on in which order you're going to place the pulleys. Are you going to place the pulleys in a clockwise or counterclockwise order? So what I mean is that um, if this is your first pulley, you could put, if you're doing them in a clockwise order and you have four, you could put your second one here about 12 o'clock, one at uh, three o'clock and one at six o'clock. And that would be a counterclockwise order and it will number the pulleys ascending one, two, three, four in that order. You can also apply them in a counterclockwise order. So again, if you're starting at one here, you could make the second pulley six o'clock, the third three, and the fourth one at 12 o'clock. So decide up front which way you're going to order your pulleys. Normally, um, when you want to make adjustments, you can add in a pulley with a slot or a, um, a pivot. For me, I generally, if I don't have a specified way of tensioning the belt, I would use a slot. Uh, and if there's no need for it, I would just delete that slot, um, slotted pulley um, movement off at the end so that you just have the final position of the pulley. If you don't have knowledge on the final slot, it's best just not to include it in the design and you can add it in later when more information is available. It should be noted is if you are using a duty cycle, then your service factor will default to 1.0. If you're not using a duty cycle, you can put in the standard service factors, but the expected sorry, the service factor of say 1.6 for synchronous. But the expectation is that if you have a duty cycle, you have measurements or you have an in-depth knowledge of the drive, then you don't need that safety factor of a service factor because you have an understanding of the loads in the drive. Having a look at the screen here, um, you can see the pulley there. It's difficult to see, but along the bottom are uh, the coordinates of the pulley, the number of the pulley, et cetera, and some information. And as you add pulleys to the drive, they start to list below it in this uh, part of the screen at the bottom. Once you've done the layout, you can go to a load entry screen, and this load entry screen is laid out, as you can see here. It has the uh, geometry on the top left. There's um, a section at the bottom where you can add a duty cycle. At the moment, you can see that um, it's got a single condition for 100%. If you were to go to this button and add conditions, you can add multiple conditions. You can also name the conditions. They default to one, two, three, four, but you can actually write in your own descriptions of them. Bearing in mind that as you add a condition, you have to adjust the time at each condition to make sure they still all add up to 100. If they don't add up to 100, the software won't calculate. As you put in each condition, you have to also add in the um, speed and the torque and power for each condition um, individually in order to make them uh, work. <coughs> so as I say, bear in mind that if you do add conditions, the service factor automatically defaults to 1.0. They must equal 100. 
and they can be named. One thing that's interesting about uh, the Zen IQ is you can select which pulley you wish to be the driver pulley. There is a checkbox for you to select, so you can change which one is the driver pulley between conditions, and you can change the direction of rotation between conditions. So you can have two conditions, one of which is uh, counterclockwise and the other one which is clockwise. There's some more information on the screen, um, but until there's uh, a calculation completed, um, it's not really worth looking at it. We'll look at it when we go through the live demonstration, etc., um, as we go along. When you um, have completed your design, you can then print it out. There's a print button. Uh, and when you um, do so, you get a screen like this. This um, allows you to select the information you will have on the printout. For me, I would recommend that you go with this, that you always go with uh, the dynamic output set to detail. Um, for those of you who've used the software before, if you've uh, set the dynamic information to uh, summary, you get a very abbreviated amount of information. To be honest, I'm not sure what the practical use of that information is. Uh, and I always set it to detailed. You're going to have a shaft load summary that will allow you to list the loadings in each of the shafts and it shows you the highest load condition for each shaft in a separate table at the bottom. Um, you can either show or not show the minimum width. Um, you can see the tensioning data for a selected span or for all the spans and the tensioning data for selected uh, methods or all methods. The um, tensioning method for selected span, when you do the design, you can actually select which span of your design you wish to know the tension information on so that you can uh, use it for setting or measuring the tension. Um, the various methods you can use, you can use sonic tension meter, load deflection, uh, in some cases elongation um, or um, tension or torque. So those methods can be displayed individually or all at once on the output sheet. Bearing in mind, if you do so, you can get quite a long output sheet because uh, if you've got three or four spans, you can have um, three or four um, sets of information for the spans and then the same amount of information for each span if you select for various tension methods. So it is. Uh, it can lead to quite a large data sheet coming out at the end, but you can select these. But my recommendation is uh, print geometry and dynamics. Always select detailed, um, select coordinates, and um, select tensioning data for the selected span and the selected tensioning method. And that will keep you focused on the information you require. When you actually do the printout, um, you will see this screen here. This is some basic information about the, uh, the design you're doing. You can put in the company, etc. So you can fill in uh, that information. There's a drive description box here, which has a limited number of uh, um, a limited number of keys which can be selected or characters. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. And that drive description prints out at the uh, top of the sheet here where it shows example one. One thing to note is that if you copy and paste a description in, you can actually copy and paste in a larger description than you can type in just by typing into the section. So that's something to note if you need a more detailed description. Bear in mind though, it's got to fit in this uh, space at the top. You can also put in user notes. You click on this button here and you can type in some notes and they will be at the bottom of your printout screen. One point to note is you get a scary message uh, if you try to edit the note. Um, this is one for entering. But if you press edit um, a note without actually selecting the notes which are will be listed, you get a message saying you have an unexpected error, quick or continue. 
all you have to do is press continue because all it's meaning is that you haven't actually clicked on one of the messages you wish to edit. So just go back, click on the message, click on edit, and you will be able to continue as normal. So that makes it uh, easier. When you have a look at the printout, select it into sections, general information, who did the drive design and who was it done for. There's layout information. There's information on the belt, the type, the length, the width. Um, you've got uh, layout information, the X, Y coordinates of each of the pulleys. As I say, I like zero, zero for the motor and for the pulleys, so they're listed there. Uh, the diameter of the pulleys, the number of teeth, the ratio from that uh, pulley to the motor pulley, the wrap angles on each of the pulleys uh, in both degrees and number of teeth, the arc length, so that's the arc of uh, contact of the belt with each of the pulleys, and the span length. Again, that's in uh, distance and in number of teeth. Because there's an idler in this one, it's listing idler data. So you can see idler data there also. If you didn't have an idler, that section would not be there. That's very simply the um, information on the presentation. It's to try and jog your memory when you go back into the software. Um, but I will now go through um, the software itself, and hopefully that will uh, help you uh, understand it a little bit better. You'll be able to refer back to this presentation. So let me just swap to the software. I will do a new drive design. So um, as I said, when you start a new drive design, um, you select from a belt type from a drop down menu, select polychain carbon volt. It says there's eight and 14 millimeter pitch belts available. I'll select eight millimeter pitch. You can do that for all of these parts. It's the same with GT4. Um, eight and 14, GT3, it lists all the pitches that are available. But for the demonstration, I've gone to eight millimeter pitch carbon volt. When you select that, you go automatically into the uh, geometry screen. It puts a single pulley in there. Um, if you scroll down the screen, uh, you can actually see the coordinates of the pulley listed, the name. You can actually type in a name if you want. And that name will display in the center of the pulley, but they're automatically numbered one, two, three, four, five, etc. The controls along the top, standard, file, edit, view, etc. Tools that allows you to change the basic information, user, language, etc. Units of measure. The buttons across the top here, some very simple things. Um, so you have your usual new, open, etc. Uh, when you get to these ones, this these are the buttons where it decides whether you're going to input the pulleys in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So you select that up front. Do you want to go a clockwise entry or counterclockwise? I've set mine to clockwise. This button here is, if you're partway through the design and decide that you've made uh, the wrong choice for the belt, you can go back and change that. But we'll look at that in the demonstration. The buttons down the side, Pretty straight uh, forward. Let me just display them all. Add a pulley, invert uh, or flip the pulleys, take a pulley away. Um, you can zoom in, zoom out, zoom to full screen, um, undo or redo, uh, change a pulley to a pivoted idler or a slotted idler and remove the idler from a pulley. So looking at it quite simply, to add pulleys, you click it and go and you position it on the screen and then just drop it. As I say, it numbers of pulleys. Because I've selected clockwise, when I put the pulleys in, it doesn't matter where I add them, 
it numbers them in a clockwise direction. So that's one, two, three, four, five. If I change now to counterclockwise, it doesn't like it. Um, so you have to decide up front in which way you're going to add the pulleys. Just go back to clockwise. To remove pulleys, again, you just click the button. To flip a pulley, you can click that button and it flips it from an inside pulley to an outside pulley or a back idler. If you want to, like say, take a pulley away, just click on the minus button. Um, you may magnify or you can make it smaller, or as I say, you can go to um, full screen. You can undo with that and it will undo the action before or you can redo it. You may have noticed that in the centre of the screen there, there's the pitch length. And um, what it's automatically doing is calculating the belt length as you dynamically change the drive. So as you add pulleys and take pulleys away, it gives you the belt length in millimetres and the number of teeth or the belt length. Uh, if it's a V-belt, it will give you the pitch length or the effective length, datum length, etc here. Um, as you add pulleys, you can see the table in the bottom. The more pulleys you add, it then adds parts to the table in the bottom. It gives you the XY coordinates, the type of pulley, a grooved pulley, the diameter of the pulley, and um, what the units are. Is it movable or fixed? Its diameter in millimetres, the ratio between it and the motor pulley, the wrap angle, the arc length and the span length, etc. I've only named the first pulley, and you can see the second two are blank, and they're just numbering them. If I was to add another pulley into the drive, um, so let's go to the top of the screen. Let's, yeah. Unfortunately, because of the uh, screen size, it's not showing the full screen. Normally, on a large monitor, you would see all the uh, screen at once, but I'm, I'm working from a laptop at the moment. so. Because I've added a fourth pulley, you can see the new data is in there. Gives you the centers of the coordinates for the pulleys um, with the motor as zero, zero. Pulley sizes are there. Um, you can type in the pulley size. So there's uh, a drop down menu. So you may select and it shows you the industry standard pulley sizes, uh, but you can Click on the pulley and stretch it dynamically, larger and smaller. And it can be set to jump singly from groove to groove, or you can set it to jump between the industry standard sizes. But you can drag it in and out. As you see, if you drag it too small, below the minimum recommended, you start to see um, a dotted line, and it will give you an error message when you try to move on. But um, as long as these pulleys are green in colour, then you are within the uh, limits that are acceptable. As I say, you can also type that value in. You can select it from a drop-down menu, or you can type in a value 48, for example, and it changes that pulley there to 48 grooves. You can see there, inside flat backside, you can actually change that to inside, flat inside, or flat backside. It is possible on some drives that even though it's a tooth belt to use a flat inside pulley if it's a very large diameter. So the options are there, but for uh, tooth belts, you would most often use uh, a grooved inside and a uh, flat backside idler. The idler, uh, again, you can move the position of a pulley just by clicking and dragging it. Uh, I shall go back to there. So you can take it, you can drag it, you can move it around. And as you move it, you will, uh, you will see that the coordinates in the bottom line change as you dynamically move it. Also, you will change, you will see as you dynamically move it, the belt length at the top of the screen also changes in line with that, with that movement. If you want to make a pulley an idler, you highlight the pulley you want and you go down to the bottom uh, boxes here. And if you click on that one, it automatically sets a pivoted idler. Um, you can dynamically move the position of the pivot point and you can stretch the length of the arm as you wish. 
So you can uh, pivot in. You can also change the length of the arc just by uh, clicking and dragging. In order to move the belt within that arc, you can select uh, the pulley, you can select it and move it along that arc, and it will dynamically show you changes in the belt length based on the position of that uh, pivot. If you want to take the pivot off, all you do is select that one there. If you're just trying to find a belt length that's uh, correct, I tend to use a slotted idler. It automatically adds a pulley slot with one pulley down to either side of where you have the pulley. And again, you can, um, when you set it, it automatically positions the idler at right angles to the belt, but you may move that. You can dynamically change it. You can drag the slot longer or shorter. Again, oh, sorry, move the entire thing, change the angle, or you can move the pulley position within that slot by just dragging it up and down. And as you can see, the belt length changes dynamically. If you have a look at these uh, color sections here, these are the installation and take up uh, limits required for this particular belt. So if you have a look here, when you get to the end of the red one, that means that your uh, pulley is no longer in contact with your um, your belt. And if you go to the limits there, you're at the limit of the uh, take up of a belt length within that uh, slot. So you can change those, you can change the diameter again, you can drag it smaller, larger. Again, if you want to, if you've decided this is where I'm having my slot, I want to select my belt length, then you just need to go to this button at the top. Uh, and what it does is it lists all of the standard belt lengths which fit within that slot movement. So in this one, it's 896 millimeters, and it automatically adjusts the position of the idler to the length of the belt, as you can see, 896 millimeters. If you want to select your own belt length, this only lists the, um, the standard ones. So if you want to select your own belt length, you can type in a number of teeth there, an integer number of teeth, uh, and it will move the idler to that number of teeth. As I say, in this case, it's 112 teeth for an 896 belt. If I wanted 111 teeth, I can type in 111 into this box. You can view the position and say, okay, what, what does it look like? That's what 111 looks like. Okay, I'll try 110. View it again. There's 110. And as you can see, it's changing that at the top there. And if you now OK that, that becomes the position of the uh, idler to give you that belt length. Bearing in mind, as I said earlier, if it's a non-standard belt length, the tooling may not exist, and you may need to uh, source tooling in order to, uh, to get that belt length. As we've been doing that, it's been changing the positions in the diameter, uh, the table at the bottom, and pulley two, which is the uh, idler, uh, tensioner, you can see that uh, that those coordinates there are the center points for that pulley based on those coordinates. Uh, one thing to have a look at, let's just go make it a bit smaller. If you go to the menu along the top uh, and have an idler, uh, you can see there is this item here, edit idler. You can actually go in and edit some things about the idler. You can type in, if you're coming, if you're working from a drawing, you can type in the um, start and end points of the idler, of the slot. You can type in the length of the idler, and you can type in the angle. Um, so, for example, if I wanted the angle to be an idler to be at 330 degrees, I can type in 330, and it will automatically change the angle of the idler to that. You can see a little key here, which tells you what the uh, the angles are, how the angles are based in the printout. If I press OK, it's now changed the angle of that idler slot to 330 degrees. I'll take that idler off, and if I go for a pivoted idler now, 
Um, so you have the idler there, you can adjust it by clicking and dragging. If I go to that same idler edit box, I now have some slightly different options. I have the length of the pivot arm now and the angle of the um, the belt, uh, the <coughs> pivot. It also tells you the coordinates of the pivot point. So that's the origin, that's not the center of the pulley, that's the coordinates of the pivot center. And it also gives you the center point of the pulley itself based on its current position. Um, you can have a min angle and a max angle. So that's basically these figures here, how much it goes through the pivot. As you can see, this one here is just off the uh, vertical. And based on that uh, scheme there, you're at 285, nearly 286 degrees. So you can type these in, you can change them, saying I want the angles to be 200, uh, the minimum, and 300 as the maximum and do OK, and you can change them. So that's then changed. Now, you should note that when you do, when you change some fields, such as the pivot point, let's say 92 and 156, and try to press OK, it won't let you change just based on that field. Uh, it's asking you to change another field also. You must, so you maybe want to change the center point or the Y coordinates. If you don't want to do that, a simple thing is just to add a zero onto uh, one of the other fields. So it doesn't actually change any of the dimensions, but the software allows you to continue. If you're running through your software and think, ah, I've made a bit of a mistake here. I don't want to use that belt type, but you've got your layout already set up. You can use this button here, which is choose another section. So if you select that button, it gives you the option to save the changes to your current drive. I'll say no here. And you go back to the selection screen. And what it allows you to do is you can ch choose a different belt type or a different belt pitch, etc. You can even choose a V-belt if you wish instead. But I'll go for a Power Grip GT4 8 millimeter pitch belt. And if I select that, it now says, OK, if you change to a Power Grip GT4 belt, same pitch, um, you can calculate the change in geometry based on the closest standard pulleys, or you can use non-standard pulleys. Bearing in mind, if you're changing a belt with a different pitch, it will recalculate that belt to the closest standard size or the closest number of grooves based on the new pitch. Because I've selected the same pitch, um, it's able to use the same sizes. So I'll use the close uh, calculate with uh, non-standard, since 33 groups is a non-standard, it will uh, continue to uh, do that. So I'll calculate with non-standard and apply, and the layout has um, now changed to a power grip GT4 belt, but the pulley sizes are as close as possible to what they were before. And in this case, the same because I used non-standard pulleys. It's kept the idler OD the same. I'll just change that idler OD to 80. And you can just, just type it in the screen there as you go along. Um, good practices if you're doing idlers, try and stop the idler overlapping with one of the other pulleys, don't let it get too close. Obviously, that's not practical um, to allow them to overlap in real life. Another thing to note is you can change the length multiple times. So um, you decide you've got a belt that doesn't work. On some of the um, larger adjustments, let me just see if I can do this. I'll change the to the point there, yeah. maybe get a little bit more adjustment out of it. So now there are actually two belts which fit into this, uh, the, the adjustment of this idler. 
So you can double click on it and it will go to one size or you can say, OK, I'll try this one. Which one do I prefer? Which one's better for my layout? I'll use that one there. OK, and it's gone to that layout. That's what your layout looks like there. And it's adjusted your belt length at the top there. Now that you've put the belt length and you've got your layout set up, uh, set out, you can go to the load entry screen. There's an error message saying that the belt's designed outside the usable range of the idler. You get that a lot if your idler range is bigger than is required. I would just say ignore it. Um, you might get other screens um, as well saying the idler, uh, the pulleys are too small and it won't do a drive calculations. Those you shouldn't ignore, those you should adjust um, to make sure that your drive is acceptable. Usual buttons across the top, um, save, open, etc. Um, you'll notice there's no print button, that's because you haven't done a calculation yet. Looking down the left hand side, there's your layout, and this is where you can see your conditions, a single condition, 100%. If you click on it, you can see there, you have your uh, four pulleys listed, the speeds of each of the pulleys and the load. It's showing you that the uh, pulley number one is the motor and that's the driver. If you were to click that uh, checkbox to here, um, you would be able to change another pulley to the driver. But if you go to the options again, you can uh, see you can add your speed. I'll add it here, 1000 RPM, and it automatically sets the pulley speeds. Um, I won't add in a power to that one because it's an idler, but I can add a power to that one of three kilowatts. Uh, the one below, I can say five kilowatts. You can change the units you use uh, from a drop down menu. Uh, as you wish, whichever is easiest for you. And because we've only got one condition here, we can add a service factor of 1.6, say, and 1.8. I tend to use the same service factor, but anyway. Come on. And it automatically adds a uh, does the uh, some of the service factor for the um, motor pulley, and that's the one that will be used for the calculation. Go back to options. As I say, if you want to add conditions, a warning: all service factors will be set to one. Yes, and it gives you the opportunity. Default name for the condition is two, but you may type in your own name if you wish. So that's condition two. As you can see in this, it now lists the conditions um, and you have to now make sure that you give each condition a percentage of time. In this case, I'll give, give condition one 90% and condition two 10. And you can see that adds up to 100%. If you don't go to 100%, as you can see, 1% going to 91%, you won't be able to carry on with the calculation. So change that to 10. You can add in, you know, I have had drive with 100 conditions in it. If you are really that patient that you need or want to add in 100 conditions, but um, I've not reached the limit that I can draw, I can add. You've The calculation takes a little bit of time, but you can certainly add in a significant number of conditions. Thing to note is condition one, I've put the powers and speeds in. The um, service factors have defaulted to one, so I now have to add the same conditions uh, for, or the same items for condition two. So I need to add the power and speed. In this one, I'll add the speed of 2000 RPM. And in pulley number three, I'll put in five kilowatts and Pulley number four, um, I shall add in 10 kilowatts. 
So now you've added in a condition, you've added in you've added in the um, powers and speeds. Condition one, um, if I look at the motor pulley, is running clockwise. I can change condition two to clockwise uh, to counterclockwise. Point to note about that: if you have multiple directions, you're supposed to put your uh, tensioner on the slack side. So if your tensioner is uh, on the slack side for one direction of rotation, it will obviously be on the tight side for the other direction of rotation. And you should bear that in mind when you're doing your uh, calculations that you must make the tensioner and its um, supporting structure robust enough to carry the uh, tight side tension as well as the slack side tension. Now that you've done that, um, you've added in your conditions, you want to hit the button here, calculate. There are two buttons, um, calculate and back. Back will just take you back to the geometry screen if you want to change the geometry. Um, calculate will actually do the calculations. It's telling you there's less than 60 degree wrap on pulley four. That's that one there. We'll bear that in mind, but we'll just ignore that. You could go back to the geometry screen and move that pulley so that you get more wrap. Um, and that would normally be the recommendation. But now that you've uh, done the calculation, these fields here have started to populate. It's told you the uh, belt width that's selected from the calculation. Um, it's set automatically to the load deflection or force deflection type of tensioning. And it tells you it's tensioning on span one. So that's between belts, uh, pulleys one and two. So that's this span here. If you wanted to tension a different span, you have a drop down menu. And you can select here, and I'll select between pulley four and pulley one. So it's now doing the uh, calculation as if it's based on this. The method is load deflection. So it has a deflection distance here uh, of 0 0.92. You can change that deflection distance. I'll use two here. And as you can see, uh, it changes the information, the deflection forces to match the deflection distance. So if you change your deflection distance, the forces are automatically updated. Normally you want to have a reasonable deflection distance so you can measure it, but you should know as you increase the deflection distance, the force in order to achieve that uh, deflection is increased. You can use a, bit, you can use a different method. Uh, because you've got a pivoted tensioner, you can use the tensioner force or torque. Uh, you click on that, it will um, and calculate. Ignore that still. You can see the force in Newton meters for that tensioner to be applied counterclockwise to the drive. You can also use a sonic tension meter. Uh, in this case, again, you're uh, going to pull it uh, span one to two, and it will tell you the basic information about the belt and the frequency for a new belt, a used belt applied to that span. If you change it to a different span, the frequency updates. And as you can see, because I went from a rather short span to a slightly longer one, the frequency value has dropped uh, in proportion to the belt length. Let's do a calculation. You can see the um, static tension values are listed there, and it shows you the belt, belt width there. Um, it tells you the calculated minimum width is 21, so it's selected a 20 millimeter wide belt. That's just because the width is so close that the software is devolted to the belt below. If it had been a few millimeters uh, wider, it would default to the next belt length up. You can input the belt width, and that will allow you to select from the next belt up. So that's you populated that screen. You can save as you go along, just press save and you will save your uh, changes and updates. It's always a good idea to do so. But now you've done this screen, you've done the calculations, you can uh, print. If you notice there's a small drive information screen, that's this one here that you can fill in uh, both on the geometry screen and here. But you should note if you go to print, 
and you haven't already filled that screen in, it will give you the opportunity to fill it in now. Um, I'll just put in paste there and um, I'll add a user note, just call it note and put some text in there and it will add that note to the bottom. And as I say, if you try and edit that note without actually selecting it, you will get an error message. So you just ignore it and go back, click on the message and press edit. That will delete the note and then this will add more notes. So you just press OK. Those notes are now in there and you could, uh, uh, you will see them later on. As I say, you can uh, adjust this screen, but by default, this is what I go with. Detailed, geometry and dynamics, tensioning for selected span and for selected tensioning method. If you then print and based on coordinates. If you print um, now, it takes you to this screen here. You can uh, print it, export it to PDF. You can zoom in um, and you can display when there's multiple sheets, you can display more than one at once. I'll zoom in to 200% just to go through the screen. There's the geometry on the left at the top. The belt information, power group GT4, 880 millimetres and 30 millimetres wide. This is the layout data. So this is the coordinates for each of the pulleys, the diameter, um, the ratio compared to the motor for each pulley, the wrap angles, arc lengths, span lengths, and the information on the idler. Um, if you don't press that detailed idler button, you wouldn't see this section here. It would just show you this information here. But this is the detailed information on the idler, the take up positions and the, and the length of the belt for take up. That's the first page. Um, it displays it, let's just zoom back to 100%. It displays it one page at a time. So you press next to go to the next page of the printout. So then we're now seeing the dynamic data. And because there were two conditions, it's listing the dynamic data for each condition, 90% for one, 10 for the other, the different speeds, the different loads, um, the spine tensions, the tension ratio, the shaft loads, and the fatigue rates for each, for each of those conditions. And finally, it's giving you the tensioning information at the bottom. Uh, in this case, I selected a sonic tension meter for span four to one. So it's pulleys four to one. And there's the insulation tension range and the frequency that matches that range and the um, used belt frequencies and tensions to match. If you want to export now, you just click export and it will allow you to save it as a PDA. Um, if you go to the next page, there's not a lot of information on it, but it just shows you the user note there. That's the note I added earlier, so it will list that information at the end. And that uh, test I text I put in, it lists it at the top, so you can uh, use that to name your application. To move back to the output page, you can just close it and you're back here. Um, for me, um, I will do print again, and this time I will select no detailed idler data. I'll select summary information. I'll select shaft load summary. Data for all tensioning and all spans and data for all tensioning methods. Do the same again, and I go back to the printout and as I say, as far as I'm concerned, when you go down here, here's your layout data. You don't get the detailed idler data box. You only get the idler information here. But this is what the summary dynamic data shows. And as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty, it's not much use. So that's why I always press detailed dynamic data because I feel this amount of information is, uh, yeah, it's pretty useless. Now going to the um, next page, 
it's showing you the tensioning information. But I selected tensioning information for all spans and all, all um, methods. So you can see here it's force deflection for span one to do. It's now giving you force deflection span two to three, three to four, and four to one. So it's giving you the force de deflection for every span. If you go to the next one, um, you've got ten, the same for the sonic tension meter. And the next screen, you've got the same, but for the tension of force and the torque. And finally, you're back to the uh, final screen. As I said, I pressed the button asking to see the shaft loads. So this is a summary of the shaft loads uh, for each pulley. Um, and it selected the condition which has the maximum load on that particular shaft. So it can tell, you can use that to have a, an understanding of the load and angle of the load so you can think about uh, what bearing you require. Again, if you want to, if there's any, any errors, it just tells you that there's less than six teeth in mesh in one pulley and uh, the wrap is lower than 60 degrees. If I close that again, that's me back to the uh, data input sheet for loads and speeds. Um, I can go back, I can delete a condition. If I go to the um, options, I can highlight condition two. If I can, can delete that condition, I can delete all conditions. Uh, I can go to the options, I can add a condition again. So there is the, uh, you can adjust it um, going back to an old um, design. Again, if you keep saving the design, you can go back and make updates to it. As I said, if you want to go back to the geometry screen, you can go through all of that and change the geometry screen. Um, I should also point out that you can, let's just do print, select your print language. So you can do your design in English, for example, but you can have the print out in another English, uh, language or vice versa by clicking on there. Close that. So we can go back to the geometry screen, that's you back here. Again, you can make a change. You can say, okay, I don't want that to be uh, a pivoted idler, I'll make it a slotted idler. I don't really know the idler position, so I will just take the idler off for the printout. You can go back, you can move pulleys again, um, you can change the size, you can change position. As I say, I've moved that away from uh, the motor away from zero, zero now, so you, you can uh, see that. So there's a lot in this software. This is some of the basic functions. I hope this has been interesting for you and gave you a little bit of insight into the uh, software. There's a lot you can change. Um, you should note that you can also right click each of the pulleys. And when you do so, um, you can do things like on this one there, um, you can insert pulleys, you can choose different sections. Um, you can flip the pulley. So I've now flipped that so it's an inside pool, uh, an outside pulley, but obviously that completely ruins the design. Just go back there. Uh, but you can right click and make some changes. You can change that to a slotted or a pivoted idler just by doing that. You right click it, you can see um, the properties of that particular pulley, its number, its diameters, uh, number of uh, teeth, etc. You can change things in there also. But it is uh, very versatile. As I say, you can do a lot of uh, dynamic changes, or you can go to the idler edit button and change it via that. You can, if you don't know the final position of your idler when you complete uh, when you're completing design, I recommend that you uh, just get rid of the idler by clicking on it and doing remove idler, and that will allow you to. Um, have a clean printout. It's only once you know the uh, final uh, adjustment that you've got, you should add the idler in. Uh, I hope that's been useful to you. You can, as I say, change the belt type via that. Um, 
We won't save the changes. We can change it now to a VBELT if we wish, just by doing the similar process. Um, in this case, I shall look at the Predator belt, 3VP power band. So you're going back to this screen again. So you calculate the closest standard pulleys, apply. And now that now what you have here is a Predator drive design, and you can continue on with it as a V-belt design. You can see at the top, you've got pitch length um, and effective length rather than number of grooves. If I make it a slotted idler, when you go to adjust the belt lengths, you can see the standard belt lengths for the Predator belt. And the rest of the functionality is very, very similar. Um, you go to load entry, just ignore that error message, calculate, it comes out with the final belt. If you go to, uh, you can still select the spans you want, etc. cetera, um, for your tensioning. Uh, you can select the information you want to put in, everything is the same. When you go to, uh, let's just see, one thing that's slightly different is um, you can select a number of spans you wish to deflect. Um, if you've got multiple belts, you can have one span, or you may want to try and deflect two spans, mm -hmm. uh, two belt strands at a time. In this case, uh, let's say it's a power band, so it's a minimum of two strands, but you can select four. Uh, you can change the number of strands you wish to deflect there. Um, always a point to note. Uh, it, could it could default to a number that isn't the same as the number of the total width of your belt. So always look out for that and just make sure the number of strands you're deflecting is the number you want, because when you have the information in the printout, it won't necessarily be correct if you're uh, wanting to deflect four strands, but you've only selected the uh, load deflection for two strands or the sonic tension meter frequency for two strands. So, that's a point to look out for. But again, all the information is the same for V-belts. You see the uh, the information there, the um, the frequencies, or if you want to change the type, you can have load deflection, etc. Again, you may change your uh, deflection distance. As you change the deflection distance, the uh, load to deflect gets greater. Very versatile software. There are a lot of functions in it. These are the basics. Um, hopefully, there will, there's a couple of uh, tips there that will allow you to um, start to do drive designs if you haven't uh, done any already, or it will allow you to um, be more efficient in doing those that you have. Um, but it's a really powerful design tool for those with a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more understanding up front of what they want to do. But it is excellent for laying out and finding the requirements for your drive. Again, just easy to move these things. Make sure I always tend to save regularly as I go along. So that if I'm making a lot of changes, I keep saving the latest change. The software doesn't save automatically. Are we looking for questions, Michael? Are we OK? Uh, no questions come in so far. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but that was a very interesting session. Yeah, um, yeah things, to, things to note is, as I say, um, make sure that you put decide up front if you're doing clockwise, counterclockwise, because you can get yourself in a little bit of a mess if you don't know. Um, decide on your belt type up front, but you do have the option to go back and change it if you wish. Think about your idler um, tensioner um, up front. Uh, how do you, question, how do you save a file? Uh, you can just use the save button there. It says there are warnings, do you want to save this file? Yes, I just want to save it anyway. And as I save it, um, it defaults to the last directory um, in which you were in. 
but you can just go in, select a directory, um, name it as usual. Paste one. Save and there's already one there, so I'll just say yes, I want to replace it. And it's just saved just like that. Same with opening, you just open them as uh, normal. Uh, the, they have their own specific um, file extension, so you can always find the, uh, the right ones. They're relatively straightforward. Do file and open again. Don't want to save the changes to that one. It gives you the option to do so. No. And then I can look through my uh, directory, directory for uh, various uh, design IQ files. And there's uh, test one. Double click on it and it opens up. So it's relatively straightforward um, to save and um, open files. If you've got any questions, feel free. Um, the presentation will be available uh, and we are endeavouring to record this and uh, save it on to uh, YouTube so that you may go through it at a later date. Any questions or comments? We have recorded the questions, so if we've been unable to get back to you immediately, we will get back to you as soon as possible. The um, Software is available for download from, as I say, gates.com. Uh, Remember, select the correct um, geographical location so that you see the correct belt types. Um, but really, it's good once you have a little bit of knowledge to um, have a play with the software. And if you have any questions, feel free to connect uh, either connect with myself, David Clark, or Michael Watley, or any of your uh, applications uh, or, or applications colleagues throughout Europe. And of course, you can come through our uh, distribution partners and uh, they may be, be able to help you or they can certainly pass on queries to us directly if you have uh, anything that's uh, a little bit harder than the norm. If there's no uh, questions, just looking at Michael there, there's no other questions. I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope you found this uh, a useful presentation. It's part of the Gates Power Transmission uh, range of presentations that we're or webinars that we're doing. Um, we will do another one in a few weeks time. And if you look out, you may get a direct mail or we'll put a message on LinkedIn. But we would welcome you to come and uh, attend that as well. Hopefully this has been useful and I wish you all the best and uh, have a good day. Okay, goodbye.